Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll be showing you how to download and install Parrot OS alongside Windows. This is known as dual booting Windows and Parrot and we're going to get the Parrot Security Edition. I'm on the Parrot OS website where we have two different options, Mate and KDE. I'm going with the Mate because that's the default desktop environment. I'm going to hit the download button. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below so you can get to the downloads page and get the correct download. Here it says Parrot Security 4.11 AMD 64 for 64-bit computers. I'm going to save this somewhere on my computer and next I'm going to flash this image onto a disk to create a bootable disk. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belinda Etcher app. In order to flash the image that just got done downloading, onto a USB CD or DVD of my choice. I'm going down to the select image button, clicking on that and selecting the image that we just got done downloading. Parrot Security 4.11 AMD 64. All right, we're gonna hit open. And then if you already have a USB CD or DVD in your computer, it'll pop up here automatically. You can change if you have multiple devices. I only have the one USB in my computer. Just make sure you select a USB CD or DVD of your choice that doesn't have any data on it because all that data will be overwritten once this flash process begins. When you have your device selected where you want to put the installer onto, hit continue. Now we can hit the flash button and the flash will start right after we give administrative privileges. Just hit yes for administrative privileges. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. If you want to download the application, you can always use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. After you flash the disk, we'll have to create some space on the system where you want to install Parrot onto. That way, both Windows and Parrot can exist on the same disk. And in order to free up storage space, go down to your Start menu and type in Disk. You'll see the Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions in the Control Panel settings. Click on this, and you'll launch your tool. This is the Disk Management tool, and what we're focused on is a root partition, so here's a C drive for me, yours might be a different letter, or you might have multiple disks. Make sure you're working with the disk where you want to dual boot pair it on, and, and be sure not to touch the EFI system partition or the healthy recovery partition. We're focused on the root file partition here, and I'm going to use some of the space that's available. I'm not using the full 127 gigabytes. Instead, I'm going to devote about half to pair it. I can do this by right clicking and hitting shrink value. In order to supply 64 gigabytes to Parrot, I need to shrink this space down by 64 gigs. Of course, if you've used too much of your disk already, you won't be able to shrink it down by that much, but shrink it down by a comfortable amount, whatever you think is good for you. Just make sure it's at least 32 gigs or above, or you might have issues installing Parrot OS. All right, so the amount I put for myself is 64,000 because it's in megabytes. That converts roughly to 64 gigs, and I'm going to hit shrink. After the partition is shrinked, you'll see that now we have these two spots here. One's the root file partition for this Windows system still. And then on the right side of that, we have unallocated space, about 62.5 gigs, at least for myself. Yours might be a different amount. Of course, it all depends on your storage size and how much disk you have to spare. But once you have an unallocated space somewhere on your disk, you're ready to go. So you can exit out of here. And now you're ready to take your USB that you just got done flashing, bring it over to the computer where you want to dual boot Parrot OS and launch into your BIOS so you can switch the boot priority around. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7, because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, monitor, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. 
make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm gonna press enter on this and this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another OS besides Windows or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. All right, and if you made it this far, you're ready to install things. We have a few options here. Try the install advanced modes, fail safe modes. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, you may want to go with the fail safe mode in order to have better options as as far as drivers go. Otherwise, you want the basic try install option. Let's select that and begin the installation process. And once the live environment is loaded here, you'll notice on the desktop background an install parrot option. Double click this option and that will begin the parrot installation for us. The installer pops up and the first question you get asked is, in what language do you want to run this installer? American English works well for me, so I'm going to select that and then hit next. Now we're asked about what territory are we in. Select your region and zone and then hit next. Following that, we can select between the various different key maps and keyboards available to us. Mine's English US, the default version, so it's all good. You can also test your keyboard at the bottom. If it works right, I typed in QWERTY, came out QWERTY, so everything's fine. I can hit next. Here we have a bunch of options. Make sure to first select your storage device up top so that it is of the disk that you're trying to install Parrot OS on. And then you have a bunch of options here. You can install alongside, replace a partition, erase a disk, and manually partition. The install alongside is not what we want. That will actually shrink a partition to make room for Parrot 4.11. We've already done this, so we don't have to do it again. We don't want to touch this yellow, green, or blue at all because this is Windows Boot Manager here. This here is probably recovery. And then we have the root file system for Windows. So we don't wanna to touch any of that. We want this unallocated free space that's unknown. The 62.5 gigs, which adds up to what we reserved for ourselves earlier. We can actually replace a partition, which is probably the easiest way to go. Unless you want to take control and manually partition it yourself, you can do that as well. But for most people, we'll just want to replace a partition. We'll select that option. And notice how now we can select this space right here. Look at that. Once we select it, we'll notice on the bottom, this turns red and it says Parrot. It's going to create a partition for Parrot that's of BTRFS. And it says at the bottom, the EFI partition at SDA1, so right up here, will be used for starting Parrot OS, which is fine. One thing I do wanna mention is if you set this up wrong, you will overwrite Windows. So always make sure you have your data backed up, no matter what, because you wouldn't wanna lose all your data and this process is permanent. So after we've selected our partition where we want to install Parrot OS, again, the unallocated space, it shows us the current and what's gonna happen after. We notice this red is now populated. Now I'm ready to go and hit next. You can put in your name, so put in a name, and then what username you want to log in with. You can also name the computer something, so this is what other computers on the network will see you as. And finally, put in a password and make sure to confirm that password. After you're done with this, you can select Next. It gives you a rundown of everything that's going to happen on the system, which is basically put in a location, set the keyboard, and then do our partition changes here as we requested. As long as you're confident that you got the partition changes correct, you're ready to go on and install now. So hit the install button and it says one last time for confirmation, you can't undo this. So do you want to install this now? Yes, we do. 
we'll go on with the install process. And at this point, Parrot OS is now installing onto the storage disk. It's gonna take a little while, anywhere between five to 30 minutes. And if you have a slower computer, it might even take longer. Parrot OS is a great security distro and a very nice alternative to Kali Linux. It has all sorts of pen testing and vulnerability testing tools. And that's one of the reasons the security edition is the most popular edition amongst the Parrot OS Linux platform. Let's give this a few minutes. And after the install is finished, you'll get the all done, all clear message. It says Parrot OS 4.11 rolling has been installed on your computer. Great, it's time to restart to the new system. And at this point, what you'll do is select the restart now. And when you hit done, after a little bit, when the screens go dark, you can take out your USB stick CD or DVD. That way it doesn't boot back into the installer. If you're not confident that you did it at the right time, you can shut down the computer all the way and then take it out and restart the computer. You'll also want to make sure that Linux is the first thing to boot in your boot priority. Otherwise you're going to log into Windows all the time. But either way, you're ready to hit done and restart things really quickly. All right, and once things are restarted, you'll get the grub boot menu. You might want to hit a key, that way it doesn't time out, and select Debian GNU Linux automatically for you. There's a few options here to use. If you want to load Parrot, you'll select the first option. It's a Debian-based distro, that's why you see this here. Then the second one is with NVIDIA off, meaning this gives you a little support for NVIDIA so you can actually install those proprietary drivers and load your graphics up until you've done that. So for you NVIDIA users, you might want this option. Finally, you have Windows Boot Manager. This is the Windows side of things. So let's boot that first, select that option, press enter and let Windows boot. Let's make sure everything's okay on that side of things before we move on to Parrot OS. All right, look at that. I'm getting the login screen and I can log into Windows, no problem. It looks great, nothing's messed up. Now I can shut this thing down and restart. That way I can get into the Parrot OS side of things. Again, while things are booting in, you'll make sure to hit a key. That way you can keep in the menu, select between the NVIDIA off or the regular option, and then just press enter on Debian for Parrot OS. And now we'll load into Parrot OS instead of our Windows. All right, now we have our login here for Parrot OS. Type your password in for your user and welcome to your brand new Parrot OS security version. Congratulations, if you made it this far, you've successfully installed Parrot OS security on your computer with Windows. You can now dual boot and select between any of them at any given time. This is quite exciting. Let's just look over some things really quickly. If you want a more in-depth review of Parrot OS and how things are set up, what tools are available, and just a complete walkthrough of the desktop environment, I have a video for that as well. I'll post it in the description below. All right, we have just a few options here on our background desktop, the home users directory, the root directory, and we have applications up top. Here's where you can get some of the privacy tools to use. There's also pen testing, which is quite large because you have a lot of subcategories and this is where all your security tools are going to be in these subcategories. You also have programming, system tools. Then we have places again, the home users, directories, and the root directory. System for system administration. You have quick links to your terminal, a text editor, Pluma, and Firefox. Some resource usage panels right here. If you click on one of these, that'll get you the system. Monitor. On the right hand side, change the volume, manage your wired or wireless connection, check the calendar out. On the bottom right hand side, you'll notice some boxes which are your virtual desktops. So if you want to work between various different desktops, you can by using these. On the left hand side, we have our menu and probably the most popular thing to use is the search bar up top. You'll notice if you click all, you'll get all the expansive tools that, that are available on Parrot OS security, including all those security tools for vulnerability and pen testing. Again, congratulations for installing Parrot OS alongside Windows. Now you can successfully dual boot your system. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.